Hey folks, Jang here again from ultimatercom and I'm continuing my tips on RC kit building. This time I'm going to be looking at building uh, turnbuckles and just going to look at a, a, a few little little tricks that you can use. First off, with the eyelets, these little guys here, the ball ends, whatever comes on the end, sometimes it can be difficult to start the thread to get that to get this, uh, the actual turnbuckle itself to actually catch in there when you're trying to tighten it in. Now these particular ones from Tamiya are pre-beveled, but some of them aren't beveled very well, um, and they have a little bit of a hard edge on there. And what you can do is just take an X-Acto knife, and go around the hard inside edge, and just bevel it a little bit, a little bit less steep. So going in at not like this, not like this, but closer to a, a, a parallel uh, angle to the, the direction that the turnbuckle itself is going to go in. Make it less of a steep angle, which is just, just going to open it up a little bit. You only want to do that right towards the tip, and that's just going to make it easier for the turnbuckle itself to slide in there and for those, those uh, threads to start to catch. But there's one more thing before I actually start screwing this in. Something that's going to make this much easier. Using a little bit of grease on the threads. Um, if you've done a whole lot of turnbuckles in your life, um, building them up, you know that as you screw them in, the farther you go, the more uh, friction is going to be in there. It starts to heat up. The extra heat, uh, if you're tightening them quickly, it's actually going to start to soften the plastic, which is going to make it have even more friction. More friction creates more heat, it goes back and forth, and it's just can be just tiring on your fingers after a while doing it for an entire kit, and especially if you're doing a couple kits in a row. To solve all that, use some white grease. Just grease on the threads. These things do not uh, unscrew themselves. Remember, the eyelets are going to be on there in a permanent uh, orientation. There's no way for the screws, for the threads to undo themselves, so you're not doing any harm by putting a little bit of grease on there. I like to use white lithium grease in this case. I just happen to have Tamiya ceramic grease uh, handy. I'm actually out of, of white lithium grease. And you just want to put a little bit on there. You only need to put it on one side. You don't need to go all the way around. You don't need to soak it. Just a little bit enough across uh, the length of the threads, every, everywhere that's going to get threaded. Be sure to do it on both sides. And that's just going to lubricate the threads as they go in and make it just a lot easier. A lot easier. Makes it so much simpler. It's easier on your fingertips. This is going to screw right on there and already I can feel that grease getting in there and providing some lubrication. You can actually feel where it starts to, uh, uh, starts to spread around and it just loosens up on you. And this is just going to screw right on. Another thing when you're making turnbuckles, try to make sure that you're using the same amount of thread on both sides. This is not threaded evenly. That is not a good thing. I did that on purpose. I wanted to show that when you have extra exposed thread on one side, that means that there's less thread actually going into the, uh, the eyelet or into the ball end itself. And the less you have in there, the more easily it's going to be more easy it's going to be for this to work its way back and forth. You have more chances of this plastic piece bending, possibly even breaking off or having the threads pull themselves out altogether. While over on this side, it's in there nice and deep and it's going to be very strong. So when you're putting these things together, try to make sure that you have your threads pretty even side to side says Mr. Miyagi, side to side, no up down. And that's pretty much it for these tips on putting together a turnbuckle. Actually, wait just a second. There is another tip that I would like to share, but I cannot demonstrate it with these turnbuckles right here. So I'm going to pull up another one. This is a Lunsford turnbuckle from an Emax, and this is about 10 years old right here. I don't think they make them in this design anymore. But I want to show you something 
right focus there see that little notch oh yeah babe that really kicks it up a notch these things are actually there for a purpose bring up a Traxxas one you can see it has a notch also different companies will do it in different ways if we look at the threads here you can see that these threads are actually angled in sort of that direction there and these threads over here are angled sort of in that direction there so if I pull out here you see that they're angled out which means that if I turn it towards the camera if I turn it this way this way then it's going to be tightening and that's an important thing that's an important thing to look at is the direction where it's going to be tightening I'm turning it this way now watch what happens if I put my hand around it and say I'm turning it this way right this way to tighten see where my thumb is pointing pointed in the direction of that notch. It's using the right hand rule, which if you're familiar with uh, physics a little bit, or you've studied a little bit about you know, electricity and electromagnetism, you know about the right hand rule. In this case, right hand rule is working for these. And now that I know that, I can take and orient all of the turnbuckles on an entire vehicle that were made from this same set with that notch facing in the same direction. So all of them, both left and right, are gonna have the notch not facing out, not facing in, but facing in the same exact direction. So that all of the turnbuckles on the entire vehicle can be tightened the same way. I don't have to look at it again and figure out. I can just look one time if I even forget for a particular vehicle um, which direction it goes. I just look once, see that, okay, there's the notch. This was a, this was a right hand rule uh, set of turnbuckles. There's the notch. They're all going to tighten in this direction. It makes it a lot easier to do your tuning later on. However, not all of them use a right hand rule automatically, and that's why I didn't just say, ah, turnbuckles use a right hand rule. Here's how you do it. Some of them use a left hand rule, so you have to watch out for that. For instance, these Traxxas ones. Here you can see I've got the notch on the right hand side, and the, the threads are this way here and this way here, which means that it's actually going to be tightening if I go that way, that way, that way. Thumb is facing in the direction of the notch. It's actually a left hand rule. This is my left hand. So not all turnbuckles use the exact same rule, but look at any one of them to determine which rule that that set uses. Uh, usually a given company is going to use the same rule uh, for all of their products. Uh, for instance, all associated ones will use the same hand. Once you've got that figured out, um, it makes it a lot easier. Set up all, make sure you, no matter what, you set up all of your turnbuckles facing in the same direction if they have a notch. If they don't have a notch, still try to look at the threads and just determine from the threads which direction is is tightening try to orient them all the same it's going to make it a lot easier for you to tune your vehicle later on so i hope those were useful little bits of information for you if you have your own tips that you would like to share with the rest of the hobby community um, please post them in a place where people will be able to find said tips for years and years to come such as the friendly forums at ultimaterc.com post them up and posts will stay around. I've got posts that are there that have been there for 10 years and you can still find them by simply searching for them. It's the beauty of forums. Post once and the entire community benefits for years and years and years to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.